DNS does back that up by saying the biomechanics or the visual inspection that we're using is based on the neurologic framework that was set up in development. And so are we reduction. talking in terms of, yeah, go ahead. We're talking in terms of manual muscle testing. Um, how easy is it for the patient to produce a strength and meet an outside resistance that is changing? So the muscle test itself is a test of coordination of force production uh, in order to keep an, or maintain an isometric status around a joint. And this ability to meet an outside force over time is an important window into the brain's adaptability and potential for coordinating muscle force production. This is a elegant but simple way of determining how easy and how well the brain is coping with external adjustments to force demand. Okay. So, I mean, you know, this manual muscle testing, again, we're, you and I kind of consider it always globally in one yes. initially it's always regardless of patient complaint regardless of patient exercise prescription mm -hmm. we're generally or specifically manually muscle muscle testing regions of the body just to get a window we use that phrase window into the nervous system we're trying to get an idea yes. how the the nervous system is functioning and Again, there's an assumption, but not controversial, that if the nervous system is functioning properly, all of the muscles ought to be able to produce force and we should be able to ramp up that force and they can still maintain um, at least an isometric contraction. That's, yes. and, if we, and if it can't, that is an indication that something is going wrong somewhere. We don't necessarily know what, but that there's a problem. And that yes. same rationale goes for the range of motion that we talked about, that That's if right. range of motion is within the normal parameters and generally symmetrical, that we are assuming the central nervous system is generally functioning well. That's right. And the same goes for the trigger point or tender point um, display, right. Right. because if a muscle is functioning well, can be activated and relax uh, in time, then it does not develop areas of dysfunction. But if there is a problem with the activation or the relaxation of muscles and how it is being used with its in integration with other muscles, then we start to see the development of dysfunction in terms of nociceptive areas, a change in the tone, and um, and eventually um, a degradation in force production. And that's, I mean, that's you know, that's the fancy way of saying tenderness to palpation, tender points, trigger point production. This that's is ultimately right. our explanation for why these things are occurring and yes. to, to kind of take it back, you know, we started off by saying, well, how are we talking about I, what is ideal movement? How would we explain mm -hmm. ideal movement? And we're, we're going at it kind of indirectly. We're saying, mm -hmm. well, we do have a basic framework for what we think ideal looks like that's based on development and we can mm -hmm. apply that framework. But ultimately, mm -hmm. we have to check somebody and assess them globally before and mm -hmm. after. And mm -hmm. what we're assessing, we haven't mentioned pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. In one no. sense, we haven't mentioned pain. And no. we are taking into account our visual inspection. Mm -hmm. But we haven't said, well, you know, the lumbar spine was at 42 degrees and therefore that that that's bad because it's only 45 degrees that's good mm -hmm. we're saying mm -hmm. no there there is a pattern that we can use 
based on development, but ultimately we have to check these nervous system signs before and That's after right. globally. And that That's is right. really the only way. That's really a the way to date. Um, unless you are going to have a very complex um, setup with um, very expensive machinery uh, monitoring other physiological processes, it is not a easily clinical um, scenario to do this with minimal equipment and do it often because you need to have parameters that are sensitive but not specific. This allows you to uh, adapt it to different situations. And uh, by so doing, it gives you a useful tool that is not easily um, um, is not easily fouled by specificity of application. And by that, I mean this: a muscle test is a muscle test. the 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 failure, of a muscle to perform in time of need is, is, um, is sensitive enough, but not specific to a particular situation to the point where you can't use this muscle test in different scenarios. This is really important because if right. you have something that is too specific, then it is not a useful audit. I mean, yeah, that's the trade-off. You could either be yes. super specific, but <laughs> yeah. it's very limited, or you could be very, very general, but sensitive. And that's right. as long as you understand the limitations of that, it can be applied. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So I guess, uh, you know, in I, uh, I've said it in some of the seminars that, you know, there's a there is somewhat of a range of possibility within the scope of what an ideal movement looks like or what a quality posture looks like but a shitty posture is still a shitty posture a crappy mm -hmm. movement you know something that's way out of the norm that's right we can reliably say that's bad yes. Yes. whereas this other thing most likely is better and that's based yes. on the framework of development as well as just clinical experience of yeah if somebody utilizes that posture or that movement or that stabilization strategy in our experience and in the global experience of physical medicine they tend to have problems that's right and this is what we mean by a worse posture versus an ideal posture that's right Right. That's uh, absolutely true. I mean, we can see that a, you know, a swan with a broken wing is not going to fly. And we can tell it, we can see that from the way it attempts to fly and fails. So <laughs> it is obvious that something is wrong. We may not know what is wrong with the wing, but we go, that's a swan that can't fly. It is having problems. So it is good to identify, be able to identify the obvious. But at the same time, if we see a flock of swans flying, it is not possible then to say, well, that one flies better than the other, unless you have audit parameters by which to say, yes, this swan A is faster than swan B, or has a better technique than swan B at flying. And I think, you know, with all with our DNS background, in one sense, I think this is how DNS, somebody could take a DNS seminar or multiple DNS seminars and come away with the wrong idea because mm. we often will throw a photograph up or a video and say, you see, this is perfect. This is ideal. And why is it ideal? Well, obviously, we're looking at a picture or a video and we're just using visual inspection and mm -hmm. but ultimately all the you know dns does back that up by saying the biomechanics or the visual inspection that we're using is based on the neurologic framework that was mm -hmm. set up in development and as long as we keep that as the fundamental definition of ideal 
that it is a neurological concept and not fundamentally a biomechanical concept, then I don't think it's controversial anymore. It just so happens that the neurologic framework does provide every human on the planet with a with norms, uh, objective mm-hmm. norms of biomechanics. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more like it, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also stay up to date on our latest seminars on our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook at IMTR Seminars.